Hello, and in our last Linux from Beginner's video, we went over some basic key terminology that you needed to know before stepping into the, the Linux world. And in this video, we're gonna we're gonna expand that and talk about one of the terms I defined, and that is a distribution. Like I said in that video, a distribution is a subset of the the, the Linux structure for an operating system. And unlike Mac or Windows versions where there might be 10, 20, 30 or maybe 40 to choose from from the last 20 years, with Linux there's hundreds because they're developed by the community and they can branch off into what kind of, um, whatever version they want to. So today I'm going to tell you about some common distributions, what, what you need to look for in the distribution when you're searching out there in the big wide world for what to, for what distribution you want to use. So first of all let's go over common distributions. Firstly um, the main desktop one that you might be familiar with is Ubuntu. It's the most the most um, familiar to Windows users has the most multimedia features that you'd expect um, on a on a Windows computer built in by default. But but there's also ones like um, Puppy Linux, Fedora, um, Man Mandrave, Gen2, all these entirely different operating systems based on the Linux kernel that share the same fundamentals, mainly that they're community managed, i.e. not by a big corporation, um, and that they run the Linux kernel. So the fact that they're community, community managed means some immediate things when you're uh, looking at, into a distribution. The first thing is that you, you're going to get more regular updates because, um, because they don't have to go through all the bureaucracy and um, politics of major companies that they can push out new releases and new product new products more quickly meaning it's, it's also less refined so that's kind of a double edged sword that you have to deal with if you're uh, going to be using Linux uh, um, another thing that you have to look at is you have to be ready for is the fact that because they're not a large company, they may get new um, they may get new features out more quickly, but they'll also have less chance to security test those features because they although they did, although some of the more major ones like Ubuntu and Mandrave and Gen2 and all these other ones that I mentioned, OpenSUSE have dedicated security teams, they're not going to be anywhere near as big or or they're not going to be paid like Microsoft so there's not going to be much of an incentive, incentive to find or plug security holes so you're leaving yourself a bit open there so there are some things to be ready for so summarize, be ready, be ready to not be interacting with big corporation so be ready to interact with community members and realize that they're giving up their time to help you with an operating system so um, you need to be ready to interact on forums and other kind of sites like that you also need to be ready to realize that along with that there's no corporate support and, and no 100% guarantee of security updates the next thing that you need to look at, linking into that, is how how big the community is. So, like I said, Ubuntu is the biggest, um, or probably the biggest of the Linux communities in the in the desktop operating system world. It's had the most um, the the most chance to mature and and has the rallied the most support of um, 
former Windows users. For that reason, it regularly, regularly updated. You can guarantee that they're often bringing out more user features and that the community is going to be pretty strong. So that's something you have to think about is how often and you make sure you're choosing a distro that is going to get updated on a regular basis. The, 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 the last thing I want to uh, talk about is hardware compatibility and um, you have to make sure that the distro you choose most like when you upgrade Windows version or Mac version that is going to be compatible with your hardware. Now in Linux traditionally um, older hardware is going to work better because the, the community members have had more time to sort of compensate um, and, and organize support for hardware. So the older your hardware is, the more likely it is to work on Linux. Um, so those are just some guides to choosing a Linux distro. If you're not a Linux ninja, I'd recommend going with Ubuntu or something like Mint Linux. When I give you a guide on how to install a Linux distro, I'm going to be using a distro a distribution called Mint Linux. Only even that's not going to be the same as your installation when I show you because I'll have a slightly different version and I'll be using Mint Linux whereas you might be you, you might have selected a, a different distribution based on your needs. So um the, those that was just my spiel on selecting the appropriate Linux distro for you. Hope it was helpful in some way, shape, or form. Hope you glean something from this. Um, leave your comments down below if you are a Linux ninja. Is there anything I missed that can help more people out? Um, subscribe if you like this video. Tune in to the next episode of the series. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye.